not sure if you guys could see this, but the rad neck actually snapped off and I ended up having to push the hose on a little bit inward and just putting on this hose clamp, adding coolant and bleeding the system just to get this car home. So I'm just gonna end up swapping it out today and probably swapping out the thermostat as well and going from there. I ended up taking out the passenger side fan shroud so I can get to this transmission cooler line and I can just take this off. Now, you might want to have a bolt handy or if you have one of those plastic uh, crimping hose pliers, which unfortunately I do not have with me at the moment, you could just clamp one of these lines and then just take this off and won't have to worry about losing fluid. But if you're like me and you're unprepared, unfortunately, you're just going to have to squeeze this with a uh, pair of pliers, slide this down, and then you're going to have to, as soon as you take this off, to lose a minimum amount of fluid. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to be putting a bolt into this line to stop it up. So, so far, this is where I've gotten. Having to take out this piece, taking out all the clips, took off the cap took off the top hose and uh, yeah took off the two 10 millimeters here for the fan and took off the 12s for these uh, brackets so it's you know one on each side so I'll update you guys in a second I had to get out these two 10 millimeter bolts here I had to take out the 12 that's on each side for these brackets took off the cap obviously got off this top hose took off this inner grill piece so I could get to these bolts and I ended up putting a screwdriver a flathead on this part right here of the fan shroud that's no longer in here in order to pop out that overflow tank so you guys will see it right here sorry for the noise you guys will see it right here I had to I had to put flathead screwdriver on this side and just pop it out to get that overflow off for the transmission cooler lines that are down below this one here I didn't have another bolt so I used the socket to stop it and then you have this one far over here if you can squeeze the clamps and just slide them down the lines once you start squeezing and say bending the lines with clamps you're gonna want to spray like a uh, rust penetrant like PB blaster or WD-40 into the part where the hose just starts to open up a little bit that way it'll make this surface slippery and you could then twist the hose and pull and you should be able to pull it off it takes a little while but the part that I could say that was pretty tough about this radiator job or I should say annoying is really getting to these radiator clamps these big ones because they're turned down and they're out of the way. So don't make the mistake that I did. You wanna obviously take off that undercover panel so you could go on the bottom and reach the hard to reach clamps with the right tools. So you're gonna also want to, um, before I forget, disconnect these fan uh, connectors. You don't wanna flip up the tabs. These, not, these are not the ones where you have the tab where you would press down. You actually have to flip them up, take your other hand, and then pull the connector out. That's how those disconnect. So I'll be back in a second after I take the rat out and uh, keep you guys posted. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I ended up taking off the water neck and then the thermostat. So we're going to get the new parts in a second. This I won't be replacing. I'll just be cleaning up thoroughly with a scotch pad and a PB blaster. So, so far, that's what we got. No more rat in here. No more rat. Don't know if you guys can see that. But yeah, that's where you have the thermostat and the water neck going to. And, uh, let's get the new stuff back in. Here's the part number for the thermostat. 
21210AA120. So you guys can just pause on that if you need it. And then here are, these are the part numbers, well the same part number, for the hose clamps for the radiator hose. So that's inlet and outlet. And if you're replacing all of them, you'll need four. Just pause right there if you need to. All right. Then we have the part number for the bottom hose, which is 45161AJ100. So you guys could pause on that if you need it. And this should all apply to I want to say like a 2010 to maybe 2014. I'm not sure, just double check Outback, but just double check, um, you know, what parts fit your car and uh, call your local Subaru parts department just to double check to see what applies so you're not buying the wrong things. <sighs> so, all right, let's uh, get this stuff back in and we're gonna grab the new rad in a second. Here's a little update. Don't know if you guys can see that. That is the new thermostat that I just put in. And here is the water neck after I cleaned it up. Now there was a lot of crud all over this. I had to use uh, sandpaper and then I had to use uh, the PV blaster and scotch bright pad and just keep going over this until I could get it pretty much smooth. And uh, even the mating surface, you don't want to use sandpaper. I don't recommend it because it's a mating surface. You don't want to nick it, take off uh, material, and then you'll have a leak. So I just used a plastic razor blade and kept going over this all around the surface. And then kept between going between that and using... Uh, the scotch bright pad and the PB blaster on this surface. I also used a scotch bright pad on this mating surface and got it fairly smooth as possible. And uh, now we're going to mate that back together and complete the install, or I should say, continue the install. All right, so from here, we now have the new radiator in, new top hose bottom hose fan trouds are back in overflow tank and those uh transmission cooler lines at the bottom are all in so now here we have a coolant pressure tester which i think i've shown in an older video before so we've got that all hooked up here now the cap says that this is rated for 100 i'm not sure if you guys can see that or not 108 kPa so we're gonna take this reading that we have and then we're gonna convert it so we know exactly what that is in PSI hold on guys sorry exactly what that is here in PSI so we can tell uh, what to pump it up to leave it there for about 10 to 15 minutes and make sure that we have no leaks all right so we're back and uh, 108 kPa converts to uh, 15.6 PSI. So we're gonna pump it up here in just a moment and then we're gonna check back in about 10 minutes and see where we're at. All right, so it looks like we're good to go here. And uh, now I'm gonna start putting back some of this trim and uh, put the funnel on and bleed the cooling system of air. All right guys, so I'm sorry, but I totally forgot to start filming because I was busy making sure everything was going the way it's supposed to, but this is how you end up uh, bleeding the air out of the system, lifting up the car, making it the highest point of the system with the funnel. And uh, yeah, you'll see, uh, you know, bubbles come up every so often. But I had the fans kick on earlier, they just turned off. So that is good news and I am very, very pleased to say that I think this car is fixed. So uh, I want to say thank you for watching and uh, I'll keep you guys posted.